US December CPI data comes out tomorrow, January 12th. And I'm going to go through what my thoughts are leading into this report. Uh, I'm going to start taking a look at start by taking a look at the November report and then working our way forward. So looking at November, we've had several months of relatively low inflation. The last six months averaged uh, a little over 2% uh, inflation, which is a bit under 5% uh, uh, annualized. Uh, the November number specifically 0.1. So this is the, the non-core data. From the Bureau of Labor Statistics uh, um, slide, uh, this is the um, CPI and the core, and then I put in the expected um, data where we're, uh, we're analysts are figuring it's going to fall to after the December report. So we're expecting fall in inflation, particularly year over year. Looking at the November report and what the largest contributors to inflation uh, were, uh, shelter was the largest consideration uh, followed by food. So I want to kind of extrapolate those forward. Looking at, again, the November report, looking at food, um, very quickly energy and particularly services. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on the, the food and then the shelter. Uh, part under services. Uh, so food inflation, which is, uh, you know, 14 ish percent of the full CPI has been consistently fairly hot and strong. And um, I'm assuming it's still going to come in uh, fairly high. Energy is quite volatile why it's not in the core, but it's been sort of trending down. So food um, probably still high. What I'm mostly focusing on is the shelter. Uh, when I started diving into these numbers, I realized just how large of percentage shelter is. I kept hearing on TV that services inflation was so high, and I was thinking of you know the, the stuff you buy and the services you use, but I was under appreciation, under appreciating the, the shelter part. Uh, and that part's been coming in really quite hot, uh, very high. But this is one lots of people smarter than me online, particularly listening to Jeremy Siegel and Kathy Wood, particularly Siegel is really feeling that the, the Fed is uh, and the, the data is overemphasizing the, uh, the housing prices increases. And with these rates, it really seems that housing prices are, are flat. They maybe haven't really cratered or dropped yet, but they're, they're certainly flat. So we'll take a look at exactly what the, the month over month housing numbers uh, are. But when inflation goes negative, or I think at some point the month over month goes negative, I think it'll be driven by shelter because of you know, housing and renting prices seem to be falling and this very large influence. 33% uh, of the inflation or quoting Siegel's number, he said it's about 40% of the core number is, uh, is the shelter component. Uh, looking at the previous month in November, if you take out shelter, which is showing dramatic increases, which is probably incorrect, and Jeremy Siegel strongly believes that it's not correct, there was deflation last month or the November month. Um, so we're, we're likely already through inflation and into deflation with just this artificially high uh, shelter number that's slow to get into the, the CPI data. Uh, my first thought of, you know, organizing my ideas and that there probably is deflation coming, um, sort of reading a CNBC article, you know, sort of re-reminding me of housing price uh, or sales certainly dropping. And then I want to take a look at exactly what the, the prices were doing in the article. We kind of got some median sale data but I wanted to dive into uh, the stats, so that's next. So this is from census.gov, and they, uh, their most recent report just before Christmas uh, has the November uh, median um, house price. So I think the median would be most 
relevant for the average person. So the average house price did drop from October to November. The average selling price did increase. And obviously when you take averages, larger homes would have a bigger effect on the average. So median is the middle uh, priced house where average is, is averages factoring in uh, every house and just adding up all their value values and dividing by the sales. So we do see a drop from October to November. So it's kind of what is going to happen next. And then I, want, I took these numbers, threw them into Google uh, Slides and did a graphical version. So when you do that, uh, looking at the, the median or sort of the, the most common uh, house that had a tick down from October to uh, November, uh, but I'm really curious to see when we get these numbers at the end of the month, uh, whether it's this trend or it's not really a trend, but this blip is continuing to go down or flat. But certainly housing prices do, do not seem to be uh, going up. With interest rates, uh, there should be just constant pressure pushing them down, uh, not up with, the, uh, with what you have to pay for a mortgage uh, these days. So it seems fairly flat uh, year over year. And I believe this CNBC article said there was uh, yeah three and a half percent price increases year over year. That's a, a few tenths month over month. Uh, again, this is from uh, uh, census.gov. We won't get another housing report till the 26th of January. So well after the CPI data is released, we'll get. Uh, December average house price. Now this, the graph on the right is the sales and there's certainly a distinctive downtrend in sales, which will probably lead to um, potentially a flat or drop uh, house price. I think we're just correcting for this huge blip or you know, only so many houses are gonna get sold on average. A lot of people were moving this incredible, uh, what is that? 60 70 percent increase in house sales and we're probably going to see a correction maybe we'll see a little blip before things will average out of more people than average uh, moving during covid uh, uh, so going forward i my thesis you know piggybacking off largely jeremy siegel and, and a few others is that that shelter component is is soon going to really come down and uh and cause cpi to, to probably go negative. The Bloomberg um, reported forecasts, so core CPI, um, a draw, uh, sorry, an increase of 0.3 is expected. The um, everything in CPI is flat. Um, so there's definitely a few articles. Uh, CNBC just had one today saying there could be a negative print on month over month. So that would likely come from here. So that wouldn't be shocking. What I'm sort of more interested in is maybe what this, uh, the core CPI does. And I think that's less expected to print uh, negative. Uh, and that would be the, the biggest surprise uh, tomorrow if it did. Um, so I sort of started keeping track of about half a year ago of my own uh, numbers. The, the black ones are actual and the yellow is sort of guesstimates going forward or just possibilities. They're not really data-driven projections. So I put in the projections, the analyst projections for December, and then kind of follow the trend forward with kind of my thesis of shelter decreasing uh, the, the core um, and the, the overall inflation. Um, and if you go out just into the spring, sort of following the, the patterns that we've been showing, okay? so, you know, patterns are inflation in the, in the CPI of, you know, a few tenths of a percent, having that level off, and then I'm throwing in some slight deflation in the spring. By May, we could have sub 3% uh, inflation rates. Uh, and in the core, I'm kind of, I'm expecting this 0.3 to come in a little below, but using that 0.3 and keeping that a little bit higher, um, we're a little above three potentially in core inflation uh, come the spring. And, you know, that's pretty much just following the trend lines that we've had so far. So this graph to the right 
the actual numbers would be to the left of the blue line. It's my guesstimates or projections that are to the right, but I'm really just following the, the trend with the, the coming down of inflation. So hopefully come spring we'll be uh, in, in a relatively good shape. So where this uh, kind of leaves us, in my mind, I'm left with uh, certainly not fully sure how to uh, invest and allocate my capital. If the central banks don't slow down, so they keep raising rates, even though I think that shelter part is eventually going to come down, then I could kind of see a hard landing and, and a severe recession. So this definitely wants me to not deploy all my cash and keep some cash. Um, I'm only about 10% cash, so I don't have a ton left to deploy. Um, hopefully the CPI numbers will start showing at least month over month deflation and that the Federal Reserve and other central banks will hold rates. And maybe that leads to more of a soft landing approach. Um, ideally, we see the deflation coming through the numbers soon and they start cutting rates maybe by mid uh, 2023 and and that would make me think that we're at the the start of a bull market okay now the cutting rates and the start of a bull market is assuming that inflation uh, doesn't uh, peak back up again um, so hopefully my thoughts can help uh, you guide or mold your thoughts and again the core thesis is the shelter part which is such a large percent 33 percent of cpi 40 percent of core uh, coming down and having um, fairly soon uh, deflation month over month. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel.